Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today is another splendid edition of um, Journal Topa School of Leadership and Development. My name is Otis Topatao, the Executive Director. Much really excited to be here with you this wonderful and God bless Saturday um, afternoon from Kigali, Rwanda. Um, today is another batch of our presentation, and we are excited to have the celebrity speaker here in the building. And so, um, Madam Barbara H. Smith is going to be fully introduced by our lead facilitator, Dr. Ruben West. So, Dr. Ruben West, you are welcome, sir. Thank you. Fantastic. Everybody that's here, I want to say welcome to this training. Uh, one of the things I know that in life, in order for you to go up, you have to show up. And the great thing is each and every one of you showed up here today. And since you showed up, we're excited. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that your sound is working on. Okay, I want to make sure that you can see me and hear me. So do me a favor, just go right to the chat. And if you can hear me loud and clear, say, I hear you. Just put, I hear you. Three words, I hear you. If you can hear me in the chat, I just want you to make sure that you put, I hear you. And I'm going to make sure that everyone can hear me. Okay, there we go. Ah, I love it. I see him coming in. Uh, I see him coming in because I don't want you to miss Barbara. So if you can hear me, you'll be able to miss Barbara. And I want to make sure she's set up and ready to go. Now, the person that I'm bringing to the training uh, platform today. Wow. You hear what I said? I mean, wow. I'm talking about an international speaker, an international coach, a celebrity coach, a celebrity trainer. I've been on her show. She has her own show on a multiple different platforms. She's an international speaker. Uh, she's a, an international award winner. Come on, somebody. She's an international award winner and she's powerful. A lot of people talk about it, but Barbara H. Smith does it. So when we're talking about leadership, people can gauge leadership and they can understand leadership when they're working in corporate America. And, and don't worry, Barbara H. Smith has done that. But, but then people transition out of the corporate realm, and some of them watch this, they fall flat on their face. You know why? Because they didn't have all the structures and all the systems and, and everything that backed them up when they were in corporate America or corporate Nigeria or corporate Kenya or corporate Rwanda. And what I'm telling you is it takes a different level of self-leadership to be a leader when you're running your own company, when you're running your own business, when you're getting your own clients, when you're running your own show. That's a different level of leadership. And when I say when you're doing it, I'm not saying she does it all. What I'm saying is she provides the leadership for the team of people who do it. And so I get an opportunity to bring her to the, the training platform right now. And so here's what I want you to do. Get ready, get your iPad, your notepad, your paper, your pencil, whatever you're going to take notes with, because remember, note takers are money makers. Remember that note takers are money makers. And the hand is a digital recorder for the mind. And you're going to want to go back and capture this information from what Ms. Barbara H. Smith shares and says. And so let me give you permission right now. She says something that moves you, put it in the feed. Put it in the feed. Don't worry. At the end, I'm going to copy the feed and I'm going to send it to Barbara. But, but while she's presenting, she won't be able to see it. But when I copy it and send it to her, she'll be able to know the things that resonated with you, the things that, that excited you or ignited you, the questions that you had. And, and she'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. But, but what I want you to do is be ready right now. And, and, and here's what I want you to do as we bring her in. Let's give her some virtual applause. There we go. Some virtual applause. And then just put in the feed. I'm ready. Just put in the feed right now. I'm ready. Just type it in there right now. I'm ready. And I'm bringing to the stage none other than the one and only international Miss Wonderful, Barbara H. Smith. Barbara, please. How do you start after that introduction? Well, it was March 27th, 1990. I'm sorry, 2022. March 27th, 2022, when something happened that went around the world, it was a slap that resonated around the world. At the 94th Academy Awards, the largest display of actors' achievements in the world, Will Smith, a well-known American, Black American actor, walked unstaged, uninvited, 
hauled off and slapped Chris Rock. But it didn't stop there. When he went back to his seat, he proceeded to scream expletives, cursing, cussing him out for saying something ugly to his wife. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about emotional intelligence. Now, why would I tell you that story? Well, that's the one that's most recently embedded in the history of the Academy. That's the one that's the most recently embedded in the history of the minds of Black people in America. That's the one thing that went around the world faster than a speeding bullet. And because Will Smith, normally calm, did not use emotional, emotional intelligence, I want to talk to you today about being a leader and why it's important that you must use your emotional intelligence. So what is it? Let's talk about it. What is the EQ? You can see my screen. Let's see how come it's not going. There we go. What is the EQ? Emotional quotient or emotional intelligence? The definition is your ability to recognize and understand. That's key understand your emotions and the emotions of others and use your awareness to manage your behavior and relationships. So going back to Chris Rock and going back to Will Smith, Will Smith did not use management of his emotions. It was insulting. It was a joke, but it was insulting, but we have a statement in the United States that says, as we were children, we learned, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Well, guess what? Those words hurt. But what happened after should have been a moment of control. And when we're in business, we have customers, we have clients, we have students, if you're an instructor, who sometimes will push your buttons, but you, as the leader, must have emotional intelligence. You, as the leader, must be able to control your emotions. So there's an IQ, we've all heard of your IQ, and then there's an EQ. And I want you to know the difference between the two. So what is the difference? Well, an IQ is a score typically of intelligence. It talks to what your abilities are, how well you learn, how well you understand, how well you apply facts and information. So tell me in the chat if you've ever taken an IQ test. Is that a yes or a no? Type for me in the chat. Have you ever taken an IQ test? If you have, you understand that the higher the IQ, it's supposed to be connected to how easily you think or think abstractly. Conversely, the EI uses the emotions that you have to ensure and enhance your reasoning ability. So you can be smart, but if you have no emotional intelligence, it's difficult for you to manage your emotions because a high, EQ or EI, emotional intelligence, allows you to manage your information, manage your information and your emotions. Your managed emotions equals understanding the emotions of others. Now, how could Will Smith have understood the emotions of Chris Rock? Well, I'll tell you, let's flip it around because I believe and totally agree that it was Chris Rock's response that showed you and showed me and showed the world that he was totally in control of his emotions. And that's what we as leaders must do. EQ is what you bring. 
IQ is what you bring to work with you, your intelligence, the key part of your whole person, how you show up to work, what you know, how you work, how you think at work. But the EQ is using your IQ and your personality. What's your personality? It's who you are innately. And I suspect, I suspect and have learned that your personalities, my personality, all personalities are pretty much solid and concrete by the time you are three years old. Not much changes with your personality, but what you can do is learn about your personality, your IQ, and your emotion. I'm going to ask Joyce to please put her, her mic on mute. I can hear you in the background. Why are we- Come here? again. Please put your mic on mute. Ma'am. Okay. IE, EI is the strongest predictor of workplace performance. Why? Because top performers normally have a high EI. Your EI is going to be higher because you're a top performer. Why is that? Research indicates that your emotional intelligence is crucial. It is crucial to your performance. And so when you have an IE that's high, it is normally a superstar in the making. It's normally a person who is already in control of themselves and they are better able to function in the workplace because they can control and manage their emotions. That's what I want you to see. What's Jack Welsh say? Jack says a leader's intelligence has to have a strong emotional component. Why? He has to have or she has to have high levels of self-awareness. Get this, maturity and finally what? Self-control. Go back to the story at the beginning. Which one of these gentlemen was out of control? Type it in the chat if you remember who it was. Which one of these two, Will Smith or Chris Rock, out of control? I want you to see this, this slide here is really a comparison of what emotional intelligence is and what it is not. When you have emotional intelligence, you always have the right response at the right time and you are dealing with the right person, you. What it is not is just being nice or suppressing your emotions. Let's pause there for a second. You have emotions, I have emotions, we all have emotions. It's not good to deny that you have the emotion, recognize that you have the emotion, but rein it in if it's an emotion that's going to cause you to act adversely. You have to know that you're not being a robot. It's not passive. It's an act of knowing that I feel angry right now. What is my response going to be to that? Is it going to be to walk up and slap someone? Or is it going to be recognizing that you have that emotion and dealing with how you're going to diffuse your anger, if it's anger, your sadness, if it's sadness, and continue to operate in excellence. So is it possible to make a decision without emotion? Do you think it's possible to make a decision without emotion? I want you to type in the chat. Is that a yes or is that a no? Can you make this decision without emotion? I want you to write it in there, yes or no. Can you make a decision without emotion? Well, Dr. Antonio DiMaggio says, reason without emotion is neurologically impossible. What does that mean? Your body, your nerves, your neurons will respond with an emotion because it's a natural response for human beings. So you have to know that you're going to have emotional in information coming to you and expelling in your brain, but you also have to know that you have 
the opportunity. You have the chance. You have the control when you use emotional intelligence. It's neurologically impossible not to have emotion. But here's good news. <laughs> good news is emotional intelligence can be developed just like any other skill, just like any other thing you want to learn or develop. It can be learned. It can be developed. People feel before they think. People feel before they act. Think about that for a moment. Before you even think, your emotions are running. Why? It's a neurological, it's a nerve, it's a human experience. And so before you even think, your emotions start to run. But knowing this information, understanding that it is possible to develop skills to maintain your level of integrity, your level of peace, your level of calm, it's all up to you. And it's possible to change those feelings. It's possible to change those responses. It's possible to do the right thing even when you feel like doing the wrong thing, even when you feel like going to slap someone, even if you feel like someone has wronged you, you, the emotionally intelligent one, have the ability to control it. And the way you do that is having positive information to use, to draw from. You have to have it in your toolkit. You have to have it in your tool belt in order to bring it forward. That behavior is new for some people, but it will allow you to conduct yourself in such a way that allows others to see your integrity and level of control. So your emo emotions come first, and then a thought happens, and then a behavior comes behind that, and then your performance, how you act. So back to our story, Will Smith had an emotion. It was an emotion of anger. And then he had a thought, what am I going to do about it? And then his behavior was walking on a stage unannounced, uninvited, and literally assaulting another person. That behavior made his performance not have a great outcome. There's all kinds of information of what's going to happen, how it's happening with him after that incident. But let's not let that incident be your story. Let's know that our emotions come first. Let's recognize that as leaders, we have to constantly be cognizant of the things that we feel and not just always think we feel this, let's do something right away. Pause. I'm going to give you some strategies in just a moment. Tom Peter says this, in leadership, the hard stuff is easy. It's the stuff, the stuff that's, it's the soft stuff that's hard. Let me say that again. In leadership, the hard stuff is easy. It's the soft stuff that's hard. Think about that for a moment. I love this. You have the ability, personal competence and social competence. Personal competence and social competence. Two types of competence I want to talk to you about because in personal competence, you're self-aware. You know what you're thinking. You know what you're feeling. It's what you see. When you manage yourself after knowing how you feel, you know what to do. As well as in social competence, you're socially aware of everything that's going on around you. It causes you to have better management of your relationships. I know every person in this room has experienced some upheaval, some distress, some problem, some issue that made you want to go, oh, and hurt something or someone. But did you ever think about pausing? That's an emotion, recognize it. That's an emotion. I feel this. And what am I going to do about it? Let's talk about those four components, self-awareness, 
self-management, self-awareness, social awareness, and relationship awareness, and the strategies with them. When you are self-aware, here's the strategy to overcome these emotions. Observe that your emotions will have a ripple effect if you're not conscious of what's going on. So visit what you value. Do you value integrity? Do you value honesty? Do you value calm? Do you value peace? Or are you the one who is quick to be emotional, whether it's crying or anger or frustration, and then quick to respond without thinking, what am I responding to? Am I responding to my emotion? What am I responding to? So visit your values, check yourself, which is what we just talked about, and know what triggers you. What makes you upset? I can tell you, for a long time, I know of people whose parents would tell them, I don't have to worry about what you're going to do with yourself. I have my education, so you get yours, right? Well, when those children grow up, sometimes they feel like everyone's looking at me as if I don't know anything. Sometimes, you're told you're not smart. Sometimes you're told you won't be anything. Sometimes maybe you've heard you'll never be anything. You're, you're no good like your father was no good or your mother was no good. And so anytime someone else, as you grew older, said to you, or you made you feel like you're not smart, it triggered something for you. It triggered an anger moment. It triggered a scared moment recognize what those triggers are. That's how you're more able to manage your emotions. And question your actions. When you, tr if you trust somebody near you and they're saying that you're always reacting this way or you're always reacting that way, not only check yourself, not only know your triggers, but ask why are you responding in that manner? Because the feedback that other people will give you especially if you trust them, will be honest and you'll be able to use that feedback to continue to self-aware, be self-aware and use the strategy to contain and control your emotions. So when you're self-aware, you observe yourself. A lot of times there are people I know in this world who constantly blame others for the way they act. Is that you? Constantly blame others for the things that happen in their lives. Is that you? Constantly know that they, let's, let's start to know that we are the ones that are in control of us. We are the ones that are the best of everything. We are the ones that have the emotion under control because we know our values, we check ourselves, we know our triggers, we question our actions, and we find feedback because we, are leaders. When you're self-managing, you're also controlling that self-talk. You've heard many times about the inner critic. We all have them. We all have her. Mine is called Nagging Nelly. And I've even given her a voice. She sounds really nagging. But I have to control that self-talk so that I and you and everyone else who hears that critic can come up higher. You can do it. You just have to recognize when you hear it. How can you do it? Well, one way is to count to 10. When you hear that negativity and you know it's not true, count to 10. Count to 10. And then smiling and laughing. I heard a coach once tell me he does a belly laugh every single day. He finds something to laugh deeply and hard about. It's a strategy that works. And finally, be coachable. If you recognize, when we recognize things about ourselves that could be a detriment to our leadership capabilities, we have to be coachable. We have to listen to someone who's honestly giving us constructive criticisms to help us better ourselves. 
in social awareness strategy, it's also one of the most, this first bullet is also one of the most prolific things you can do to get to know people. As a leader, you have to be sociable, you have to be amicable, kind, forthright, have integrity, be a stand-up kind of person. But one of the best ways is to greet somebody by their name. Now, many of us, me especially included, have difficulty remembering names. But here's a trick and technique. When you first meet someone, let's just say I just met Otis. What would I say about Otis? Hi, Otis, I just met Otis. Hi, Otis, how are you? What's happening today, Otis, in your life? Otis, do you think I could be part of your network? Otis, I heard you have a training facility. I heard you have a training class. I heard, Otis, that you do lots of training across the globe. What did I just do? Type in the chat, what did I just do? I greeted him by his name, but I did something else. I repeated his name over and over and over again. The one thing that people love to hear is their own name. The one thing people love to hear is their own name. And when you repeat it over and over again within the conversation, you will remember the person's name. I promise if you try that technique, it wor works. Also, a social awareness strategy is watching body language. When you're a leader, since you're a leader, now that you're a leader, I want you to watch the body language of people that you come into contact with. Here's a closed loop body language. It means I'm not approachable. Don't come near me, leave me alone. Is that how we stand? Not leaders. When you open up your arms, when you present, when you speak, this is a welcoming stance. I want you to take that in. Living in the moment. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is a wish. But today, right now, this moment is what's important. We are always, all of us, thinking about what we got to do next, what's going to happen tomorrow, what we have to do later. But live in the moment, because really, that's all we get. And that's how you can be socially aware. Here are the strategies. And listening, oh my God, God gave us the formula for listening when he created us. Let me say that again for those in the back. God gave us the formula for listening when he created us. Why do you say that, Sister Barbara? Two ears and one mouth suggests to me that you and I should be speaking half as much as we listen. We should be listening twice as much as we talk. And I mean active listening. I mean really listening, not thinking about what you're going to say as soon as the person finishes saying what they're going to say, or when they take a breath, you're waiting for them to take a breath so that you can jump in and talk, or the worst yet, talking over them when they're talking. We have got to know that listening is part of leadership and having compassion, understanding the other person's point of view. Is this other person hurting? Is this other person need help? Is this other person wanting something from us and we miss it because we're not listening? So be socially aware. Here are your strategies. Greet people by their name. Watch your body language, living in the moment, listening and having compassion. Relationship management strategies are similar. Be open curious about a person, ask them genuine questions, be genuinely concerned, accepting feedback from them as they're talking to you. That's how you build trust, by acknowledging the feelings of others and tackling those tough conversations. Some of us, me included, 
avoid having conversations that are difficult. But as a leader, those are the conversations you must run into, you must walk to, you must go in so that you understand who you're leading. And a leader doesn't always, a leader isn't always the one who says, I'm a leader. Leadership means putting up people above, making sure others are doing well, elevating other people. That's remembering the small things, remembering that people matter, remembering that people have emotions that we all need to be aware of. So how do you increase your EI? What happens is researchers have discovered that your EI improves when you have a strong motivation to learn about it. If you don't want to learn, then it's harder for you to improve and increase your, your emotional intelligence. If I don't want to learn, then it's harder for me to learn about anything else. So you, be that change be that one it's doesn't it's not a sign of weakness that you are managing your emotions it's a motivator for you to be a great leader look at the new behaviors that you're learning how to recognize your emotion and then operate in a way that is not detrimental to your leadership or the people you're leading and seek feedback about your behavior. Ask someone you trust. Talk to people in your organization or your cohorts or your coworkers. Ask people in leadership positions already. Ask people who are where you wanna be. How do I respond when something is, is maybe not calming? How do I respond when there is a conflict? Am I the one that's causing the issue? I remember a story, I told this once. There was a young girl who was being bullied at school and she was so tired of being bullied. She went to her father and she said, daddy, daddy, I'm so tired of being bullied. I don't wanna go to school anymore. He said, come daughter, come sit by me. And when, he, when she did sit by her dad, he said, I wanna tell you a story about a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean. In the story, the father said, the woman put a pot of water on the stove and allowed it to roll over boiling. When it got nice and hot, the woman dropped in an egg. So what do you think, daughter, happened to the egg? She said, Daddy, I don't want to talk about a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean. It, it's obvious the egg got hard. OK, what next? He said, just listen, daughter. The next thing he, she did was she dropped in a carrot. So daughter, what do you think happened to the carrot? And she said, oh, Dad, it turned soft. It was boiling water for crying out loud. She, he said, yes, daughter, exactly what happened. And then he said she dropped in the coffee bean. So what do you think happened to the coffee bean, daughter? And the daughter said, hmm, I suppose it turned into coffee. The water turned. It changed into coffee. He said, exactly, daughter. And that's what I want you to do from now on. You walk into a room that's hot and boiling, you change the water, you change the atmosphere. That's what I'm telling you, leaders. When there is conflict, when there is a explosion, if the emotions are high, you don't walk in like the egg and turn hard boil. You don't walk in like the carrot and turn soft. You walk in like the coffee bean and change the atmosphere.
That's what emotional intelligence will do. So here's your action plan. Pick a skill you wanna work on and then use one to three of these strategies to start recognizing your emotional intelligence. If you need a partner, get a mentor. And then the two of you decide when you see the water changing, what happened. Keep in mind, you need to expect success, not perfection. It takes time to learn these skills and practice. Practice, 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 because you've got to be patient with yourself. It doesn't happen overnight. You're just learning about emotional intelligence. After you've done that, measure your progress. Is anybody out there hearing and getting any value from what I'm saying? If you're getting any value from what I'm saying or what I've said so far, type in the chat for me. I got it. I got it. I got it. Pick your skill, work on one. Strategies that I've just given you, work on them. Choose a mentor, work on that. And apply what you've learned, expecting success, but not perfection, because you have to practice. Be patient and measure your success. I hope this has been helpful. These tips and resources came from Emotional Intelligence 2.0, Travis Bradbury and Gene Graves. You can also look this up at www.talentsmart.com. And the North Dakota State University was also a source for this information. Have you gleaned anything? Give me one takeaway in the chat, one thing that resonated with you in the chat, and I'm going to turn it over for the question and answer period. Back to Dr. Ruben West. Fantastic. And what did I tell you? I told you all. I told you, I told you, I told you. So here's where we're at right now. She asked you to get uh, put in the chat one takeaway. What's one thing that you got from Barbara H. Smith? Was it the understanding of emotional intelligence versus IQ? Was it how to use emotional intelligence? Was it the fact that you could either be changed by the environment or you can change the environment? What's one thing that you got from this presentation? And then if you have a question, if you have a question, let's take yourself off mute and, and you get a chance to ask Barbara H. Smith herself your question. And maybe you don't have a question. Maybe you just want to come off mute and tell her how you enjoyed the presentation, whatever you'd like. If you have a comment or if you have a question, take yourself off mute and let's have it. Go ahead. Barbara, great job. Thank you, sir. So someone said, my take home, be the coffee bean. Change the environment. Increase your EQ. That's fantastic. That's, uh, Theopolis said, uh, the story was quite life-changing. You're indeed a, chain, a trainer. Yes, indeed she is. <laughs> Thank you. Indeed she is. I, I told you all. Uh, she's a great trainer. And let me say this too, you know, when when Ambassador Otis told me about this training and he asked me to be a part of it and he asked me uh, to do some training, uh, I immediately thought through the people that I knew had valuable content and excellent delivery that could be instrumental in your education, your learning and your development. If you were as an individual to, let's say, you're going to work with Barbara H. Smith one-on-one -on -one, or even Sacconi Prince or Anana Pfeiffer Delraholm or Dr. Corey Briggs, it could cost you thousands of dollars. Uh, that's very real. And so to be able to get this eclectic group with this much knowledge, bringing this information from the privacy of your own home, uh, you should be very thankful to Ambassador Otis for putting yeah. this training together. So I just wanted to make sure we said that. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance one more time. Morris, you have your hand up. Do you have a question or a comment? <clears throat> Morse, question or comment? And then we also have Ja. You have your hand up. Uh, um, uh, I see, okay, here's Morse. Go ahead, Morse. All right. 
Hello? Yes, huh? go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Mars Repo. And let me firstly appreciate our presenter today on the topic emotional intelligence. You're welcome. It's not a question, but just to let you know that a lot have been learned, most especially we as the emerging leader who are trying to lead our colleagues to the right trajectory so that they can be able to follow the styles of those great leaders that have been teaching us and impacting knowledge in us. So every movement and every minute of my time in every class since this class started, it has been a very fantastic one. So the presentations today is very clear. I don't think I have a questions, but I reject a lot of things I have drunk into the into the cup of our presenter today. So we are following. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Ja, did you uh, you have a comment? Please come up. Mute. Hello. Yes. So. Yes, I'm um, I'm Timothy Yaba, the Liberian. Okay. Okay. I think we lost him. Okay. Looks like we we lost him. If you have John, a comment, John, John, you can go ahead. Yeah, I'm just following John. Okay. Looks like he may be having issues. Uh, does somebody else want to come off mute and give their comment or question? Okay. Am I am I there? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Uh, I really wanted to thank you to the speaker tonight. Um, I learned a lot, and one thing I have learned to be a leader, you able to, you need to recognize and understand your emotion. That is one thing that we need to know as a leader. So that is something that I really have to learn. I really have to work with so that, um, because uh, one attitude or actions that you exhibit as a leader is counted on you. So I really want to say thank you tonight for the lesson. I don't really have a question because the lesson and the presentation was very clear to the point that uh, I understood it. And then I said, thank you so much for the presentation tonight. You're welcome. Fantastic. Thank you for that feedback. No, who else has a comment or a question they'd like to share? Uh, so yeah, this is Momo. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to appreciate uh, Speaker Barbara Smith for the uh, Excellent presentation. Uh, it was it was clear, and I like the way you started the presentation. You know, by uh, by being by being practical. You know, you brought you brought the example of, of Will Smith and, uh, and Chris Rock. You know, and uh, and you led us through. A lot of times, you know, uh, we as uh, humans, you know, we uh, we tend to get carried away by our emotions, but what we fail to realize is that uh, our emotions, you know, are in fact, you know. Uh, they are just, they are just, um, you know, couple of, of, of actions occurring in our bodies, you know, and if the, the, the better, you know, the more we, we learn how to control these things, you know, within us, you know, the better, the better we have control over ourselves, you know, and uh, you, uh, your presentation is an eye opener tonight, and uh, I would like, I just like to tell you that uh, uh, I, I have, I have, uh, I learned a lot, you know, and um yeah, we're going to we're going to see how best we can put this into practice. Uh, to conclude, I just want to say thank you, and uh, I, I promise you that you, you're going to hear about us uh, changing the environment. We're going to be the coffee beans. Thank you. Awesome. Fantastic. Who else? Anyone else? Eric. Yeah, Eric. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to say thank you to the presenter. I'm really, really inspired from people one. Huh. I don't know how to say it. Thank you to her, but I wish I was around to just take one of us. I'm really excited for this presentation tonight. I've learned a lot. 
Fantastic. What can all need are learn tonight. That is about being able to go to listen, be open, and you are compassionate. Those three ready to meet tonight. I'm, I'm ready for the for this presentation. So I'll say thank you to the presenter. And I hope she will come again another day to present to us. As long as I'm invited back, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for the comment. Thank you, guys you so know much. We're going to have to find a way to get uh, Barbara H. Smith to uh, Rwanda and to get her to, uh, to um, well, you know, she's an yeah, asset. Like she's been to Kenya many times, but we've got to find out how we can get her to Liberia too, because I know they will benefit from her wisdom and her knowledge. Is there anybody else that has a comment? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much tonight. I'm Sylvester Tito. Uh, her lecture inspired me a lot. You know, I learned something from her tonight. Uh, today, on my way to town, just because of the schedule I have, so I came late from town. But I was tempted, and exactly what she talked about, intelligent, emotional. I was tempted today in a political gathering where somebody accused me, but they were not open to tell me in the public that I am the one they accusing. So what I did, they accused my closer allies to me in on grand that because he moved with me, you know. So, so, so today our attempt that I actually want to I know we, we act. But I think again, I said, no, they gonna come and in. He said something in a way in which he want to motivate me or he want to activate me, but he never come and in. So tonight lecture, he just revived my mind back to what happened to me today. And I was too intelligent to control my emotions. So I want to say thank you, bravo. I think this is a second time to sit under your voice and I pray for one day you to come to Liberia so we can see you live. Yeah. I actually admire you. Yeah. You have given me a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Who else? Anyone else? Hello, are yeah. you getting me? Yeah. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Well, I want to extend my thanks and appreciation to to the presenter tonight. I have learned a lot. This teaching is a great help to me because I've been having problem with, with emotion. I've been having emotional problem. Whenever I hear something or something happens, it stare me out and then it, it, it affects me. So from this teaching, I think I can, I can work with it to see how best I can work with my emotion and as a leader. Fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. What a great, uh, what a great comment. Thank you. <clears throat> Women participation, please. Women participation, recommendation. Say that again. Women participation. Recommendations Hello. we need for women oh. to participate because we are, we are supporting their participations in leadership. So I think we recommend that they be able to participate in the discussion. You can see the executive director of uh, OTEX is recommending to the group chat. So that's my recommendation. Fit? Yes, Hello. yes. Go ahead, Faye. OK, so I want to say thank you for your presentation. But I have a question. Awesome. Good. Gonna, yeah, I want to know, according to your aesthetic, to your level of experience, how will you, or how will a leader know if he or she is emotionally intelligent? That's very easy. That's a great question. The question is, how will an, a leader, if I understand this correctly, who is leading understands whether they are emotionally intelligent? Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. One of the ways the strategy is to contact someone you trust, ask someone you trust, someone who may be doing the same type of position or someone who is close to you. Watch your emotions yourself first, but ask someone, when I'm angry, how do I act? Am I level-headed? Am I consistent? Do I use integrity? Or do I stomp around like a three-year-old screaming at everybody 
when my emotions run high. It's simple to know whether you are emotionally intelligent or not. Because your body language and your activities will tell on you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Yes, yes. Uh, I, can I add? Hello. Please add, please add, Dr. West. Uh, let me share this with everyone listening, uh, because this is going to be important as you go, all emerge as uh, top level leaders. You know, we're talking about emergency lead, emerging leaders. I see you all as leaders all, already, but what we're doing is we're giving you additional information to help you as you become top level leaders. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm going to tell you. One of the things I'm going to tell you, and I want you to really catch this information. If you, if you, <laughs> if you're not speaking, please put your phone on mute. Please put your thing on mute. If you can't stay in the room, you can't make a difference. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this again. I want you to listen. If you can't stay in the room, you can't make a difference. If you can't stay in the conversation, you can't make a difference. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Have you ever seen somebody get so upset and so angry they have to storm out? I'm out of here. Hey, you don't talk to me. They leave. All they've just done is given up their ability to make a difference. Right. If you're having a discussion with somebody and you get so, so angry that you got to ah, forget you and this and that and blah, 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 and you got to storm off, you've just given up your ability to make a difference. If you have younger siblings or a, uh, a significant other or children and you get so angry, yeah, go to your room and you can't communicate, you've given up your ability to make a difference. So as Barbara said, understanding if you're emotionally intelligent or not, in the midst of a difficult situation that's uncomfortable, where you don't like it, where you don't like what the other person said to you, what you don't like, where you don't like what they said about you, what you don't like what was insinuated. Can you still stay in the conversation? Can you still stay in the room and be able to make a difference? Yes. Because once you get so angry that you got to leave, you've also left the ability to, to, to make a difference behind. So I just wanted to share that. I love that. Thanks for helping me with that. I don't know. It's, it's what you were saying. That's why I want them to really get that. Yes. Is there anybody else that has a comment for Barbara H? Yeah. Yes. Hello? Yes. I have uh, yeah. Yeah, two people. Yeah. Go ahead. I will, ask you, I will ask you a question. Okay. Yeah, and my question is why you talk about increase your, your ER. Mm -hmm. One day you're talking about a consistent new behavior. The consistent new behavior, should it behavior be negative or positive? Oh, always positive. You're, 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 you're trying to diffuse those emotions or calm yourself. It's very difficult. It, you know, one of the quotes I used was, it's a neurological response. Meaning, without even thinking, your body responds to certain triggers. It responds, for example, to heat. It responds to cold. It also responds to words. It could be someone says something that has nothing to do with why you get a high temperature, meaning why you got heated or angry. It, have, it could have nothing to do with it, but it's your trigger. And so you wanna be able to control yourself enough, as Dr. West already alluded to and succinctly said, to stay in the conversation, stay in the room, stay in the moment so that you can get the information or be a value to the conversation. And the only way you can do that is to control your emotions. Mm -hmm. So positively control them. Did that answer your question? Yeah. And, and the other thing you got to remember is <clears throat> um, you're co keeping your composure is a sign of emotional intelligence. And, and watch this. Once, yes, people, thank you. once people see you as overly emotional, um, overly aggressive, 
hot-headed or angry, you fail to be an effective leader because they won't bring issues to you. Right. Because they feel like, man, if I say something to, to, to Dr. West, he's going to blow up. He's going to explode. He's going to get mad. He's going to get angry, even if it has nothing to do with them. So they say, well, I, I don't, we don't go talk to him. We just swallow our words. We keep it inside. But when they bring you an issue and, and they think the last person exploded, the last person got angry and you say, hey, you know what? Thank, thank you for bringing that issue to me. That's very challenging. Let's look at some things that we could do to overcome it. Right. Wow. That, now what happens is every time they have issues, every time they need advice, every time they need leadership, they come to you because they feel like it's a safe space. Yes. Right now. Now, let's be honest, we're not robots, we're humans. Right. So there may be times where you're so angry that you, that you need that mental break. So here's what you do, take the break. Listen, Barbara, uh, what you just brought to me um, is really challenging for me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take about 30 minutes and then I'm gonna have you come back. But give me about 30 minutes to process this information, then I'll have you come back. But in the, in the meantime, you, you distance yourself. Right. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to ruin the, the leadership relationship. You know, you could do everything right for two years and, and, and everything be good, but you do one thing wrong in one minute and you can ruin the relationship. That's absolutely correct. So that, that ability to pause and, and separate yourself is key. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me tell you one other thing and then I'm going to be quiet. But <laughs> if, you, if you know that you get angry all the time, if you know that there's certain things that bother you, one of the things that Barbara said is it's physiological. It's the body's response. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell the body to react when it's cold. It's going to do it automatically. Well, watch this. When you've experienced certain situations and they've always triggered you, they've always made you angry. You've always gotten upset. What happens is neurons in your body, in your brain, neurons that wire together, fire together automatic there's nothing you have to do so when somebody does something boom you can automatically get mad you can walk in the room and see that person that made you mad like, oh every time i see her yeah i just get mad or every time i see him i don't like it that's because your neurons have wired together and they fire together now the question is how do you undo that yes because now you've made it so automatic that you don't have to think about it let me tell you the technique to, to do that. What you do is you have to now go back to meditation and you have to go back to visualization and you have to see yourself walking in and seeing that person and not reacting. You have to see yourself doing the opposite of what you've trained yourself to do mm -hmm. physically because visualization and mental work works oftentimes just as good and sometimes if not better than the physical exposure to the situation. So you have to see somebody bringing you negative information, a negative report, uh, a bad news, and then see yourself being okay with it. Yeah. Seeing yourself going a different, I call it reactive consciousness, where you just automatic react. So that meditation allows you to build the pathways in your mind and recreate those pathways where you can actually respond differently. It may take you a little bit of time, but you can still do it. And let me tell you how you know if it's working. There may be a time they bring it to you, you get mad automatically. Ah, and then after the fact, you're like, man, I, I overreacted. The fact that you know you overreacted means that you're gaining the awareness that you need to develop more emotional intelligence. So you start doing your meditation. You start doing the practicing. Now it happens again. And, and you you still blow up. I'm not going to pretend like it's going to be easy. You still blow up, but in the middle of it, you wake up. You like, I don't... wait a minute. Okay, give me a chance. That ability to wake up in the middle shows that you're bringing it to your consciousness. Now you go back and you do more meditation, and what will happen is you go ah, okay, <laughs> right. And now you're catching it before you go into the reactive consciousness, right. and then. You recognize it and you don't do it. So what are the four stages? You catch it after the fact, you catch it in the middle of the act, you catch it right before the act, or you recognize and you don't react. Those are ways that you can work back the reactive consciousness and master that emotional intelligence. Awesome. Is there, is there anyone else that would like to share anything with Professor Barbara? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Barbara. I'm Harris Funding. I've been a man, uh, speaker from life. 
a presentation share and listening. Inspiring. Uh, we are talking about emotional intelligence. Now I have a question. Uh, it is talk about social awareness strategy. And I want to know how can I cope with my emotions in a social gathering, more especially in my first time meeting with different people. How can I do that? My first time meeting with people in a social gathering. How can I how can I relate to my emotions? I if I understood the question, if you are first time meeting the people, you want to know how to you manage your emotional intelligence. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah, sure. Well, it's really not about the other person. It's really about you. And so what you want to do is make sure you are aware of how you respond, whether the person's a new person or it's the person that you have had contact with in the past. So monitoring how you respond. Are you responding angrily when you meet somebody new? Or are you curious when you meet somebody new? Monitoring and watching your own emotions is key. It sounds like we're on here with the Egyptian lover, I think. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, okay, fantastic. All right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna let uh, uh, Professor Smith off the hook. Is there any final comments for Professor Barbara H. Smith? Anyone? Yeah, before she go. Please. My name is Morris Rappel once again. I want to share something with everybody on this platform today. When our presenter discussed emotional intelligence, it came my mind to where my colleagues a lot of young leaders get together to discuss a specific goal so that the people you're leading, they can be able to benefit from whatever meeting you have gone for. Or based on emotions, what some of our colleagues need to do is they will get angry and walk away. Mm. Be so emotional and walk away. So what emotional distress have done to them is that put them aside and the people they're leading don't get anything from them, from their leadership because of being emotional. Don't have the time to go and to be intelligent in your emotional, to control it. Mm -hmm. So it leads them to loss their directions and that people don't benefit anything from them. So I believe that this lesson tonight, we all got to take it in, live by it, study and breathe it. Thank you. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. I, I, that was an excellent suggestion. And one of the things I know just from my work over in Nairobi, helping with the elections and helping with civility for Kenya, is uh, some people not in leadership position, but in everyday life positions, get angry yeah. due to a lack of emotional intelligence and give away their ability to make a, uh, an impact. And let me tell you how they do it. They say, I'm not voting. I'm sick of this. I'm not voting. You understand? And what did they do? They got so angry that they gave up their ability to make a difference. They left the room. I'm not gonna participate. And once you walk away, you walk away from your opportunity to make a difference. And which is, sure. which is also your power. You, you, that, that's you the power. Your power. Yeah. Uh, Professor Barbara, is there any final uh, words you'd like to share with the listeners tonight? Absolutely, Dr. West. First, I want to say thank you to you and the entire faculty that's already gone before me and the ones that are coming after. Thank you, Otis, for having the insight and the foresight to have all of these people um, come into your environment to train them. And anybody out there that saw the last slide that was up please reach out and let me know that you are using your emotional intelligence you can check me out at www.barbarahsmith.com you can check out please do check out our youtube station we are now on on thursday at noon in the united states so that 
the other side of the world can see us at 8 p.m., 7 p.m., 6 p.m. So I just want to tell you that I have enjoyed myself being with you. I wish you all the most success possible. And you are all now qualified to be emotionally intelligent. Amen. Thank you so much. Otis, I'll let you close us out. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, this is not strange. <laughs> they, they, you know, for people who are just watching, probably the few is strange, but I know what Mother Energy can do. That's that's how I call her Mother Energy because <laughs> I feel the energy. She she's a whole, I mean, power horse. I'm actually excited for tonight's presentation and want to use this time to appreciate my mom. I mean, um, Madam Barbara is Smith for this, I mean, powerful presentation done tonight. And I'm actually excited. I want to say thank you so much for taking your precious time. And thanks to uh, my mentor, Dr. Ruben West, for, I mean, giving you a slight invite. And guess what? You accepted the invitation and you are here today making, I mean, a lot of great mark. A lot of librarians really capture what you say. When I look through the comment section, I see a lot of response into our personal chat room. They have been there and making a lot of good um, you know, comments. And I'd be like, this is something so exceptional. And I think Sylvester, this is Sylvester's second time with you, Madam Barbara. Is it? This is, this is, he's really excited because the first time was at the public speaking masterclass. And today he's here again. So, I mean, she's a whole power horse. She's not an energy. <laughs> she has the energy to inspire you so that you can use your inspiration for implementation. I want to say thank you again. Thank you so, so much for this powerful presentation tonight. And thanks to Dr. Ruben West. Tomorrow is our last presentation. And I just hope everyone will be active and conclude the week. Thank you so much, Mom. And you're welcome, Otis. I'm, I'm just excited to have you here again. <laughs> you know, I'll do anything for you, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mom. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Ruben West, thank you so much, Dad. And we hope to kick out with you tomorrow. As we oh, yeah. And, and everybody, make sure you're here tomorrow. We have another powerhouse speaker. Her name is Robin Shirell from Flint, Michigan. She's a powerful, powerful female leader.